Hello everybody. So, today before I proceed further, I would like to go for a recap of whatever we have done for uh, solutions both ideal and non ideal. We will try to solve a few problems and then we will go for some other new topics. Now, as a recap, let us see what are the equations or other what are the things that we have already studied. The first thing is for phase equilibrium, the basic equation is the fugacities of any component I is same in the vapor phase and the liquid phase. <coughs> okay. So, this is applicable for any component I where I can be component 1 to component C. So, for the time being we are con considering a heterogeneous closed system. Okay. If you, if you recall when we were when I had first started considering equilibrium initially we had considered homogeneous closed systems then we had considered uh, your homogeneous open systems and then we had considered heterogeneous closed systems where each heterogeneous closed system comprises of two homogeneous open systems. In this case also there are two homogeneous open systems one is the liquid phase the other is the vapor phase each phase comprising of C number of components. The component number is denoted by I. <coughs> For each particular component we have one such equation. So, therefore, we have C number of such equations. Now, what is F i L equals to? If you recall this is equal to gamma i x i into F i. What is this F i? This is the fugacity F i L. Fugacity of liquid in standard state what is f i v equals to this is uh, this is equal to phi i v the partial uh, rather the partial fugacity of component i in the vapor phase into y i p. So, therefore, this is basically the correction for non ideality in the vapor phase and this is the correction for non ideality in the liquid phase. Now, if we equate these two what do we get on equating these two we get gamma i x i f i l equals to phi i v y i into p agreed where we know gamma i as you know its activity coefficient x i is the mole fraction of component i in the liquid state y i is the mole fraction of component i in the vapor phase p is the is the total pressure and f i l as i have already mentioned its fugacity of liquid in the standard state now we can select any particular standard state but for most of this of the uh, situations just for convenience for do we select we select pure component liquid at the system pressure and at the system temperature. Now, from thermodynamics the only requirement is maintenance of the same temperature of the solution and the pure state. We could have selected any other pressure or any other composition, but since it is convenient we select the standard state as the system the P equals to P system pressure and x i equals to 1. So, so this is the pressure and composition under which we select or rather we define f i l. So, naturally for this becomes this becomes the pure component fugacity at temperature and pressure of solution. This is by convention we take this and out of this this is mandatory this we could have taken something else and it is important to remember that very frequently it can happen that this particular state it is fictitious because the component which we are selecting may not exist in the liquid state at the system temperature and pressure, but it hardly matters whether it is real or fictitious. And we have already found out how we can estimate pure component fugacities of both the vapor and the liquid. So, therefore, what is this equal to if you remember this is the saturated vapor pressure of the component and this has to be corrected by two factors one arises due to non ideality in the vapor phase and the other arises due to compression of the liquid phase from the saturated pressure to the pressure of interest this particular factor it is known as the pointing correction factor. If P is very close to P i saturated then naturally this term it disappears off fine. 
So, therefore, now if we if we substitute this f i l in this particular equation and equate it with this, then finally, what do we get? Finally, we get a equation as has been mentioned. This is the equation that we are finally going to get, right. So, therefore, if I just write down the equation for your convenience, we find the equation is gamma i x i p i saturated phi i saturated exponential v i l p minus p i saturated by r t. <coughs> this is equal to phi i v y i into p right or in other words we can also write it down as gamma i x i p i saturated this is the fugacity coefficient of component i in the vapor mixture fugacity component of component i under the such pure component i under the saturated conditions into y i p exponential minus v i l p total pressure minus p i saturated by r t please remember this is applicable for each component i. Well, this particular equation this is the thermodical uh, thermodynamically most rigorous equation and this forms the basis for vapor liquid equilibrium. And in this particular equation we find gamma i what is gamma i? Gamma i is a function of temperature, pressure and mole fractions. You know phi i v is a function of temperature, pressure, mole fraction in the vapor phase. Naturally, the saturated fugacity coefficient is a function of temperature and pressure. It is a function of temperature because p saturated is a function of temperature and we know p sat just the same thing has been written down here. So, therefore, this is the basic equation using which we are going to solve different vapor liquid problems. Now, for the different vapor liquid problems for we can encounter different sort of vapor liquid problems and the problems which we encountered we have already discussed they, they can be bubble pressure calculation, dew pressure cal calculation, bubble temperature calculation, dew temperature calculations. No matter whatever the problem be this is the basic equation which we are going to write. Now, for most of the cases we find that we deal with low to moderate pressures. What happens at low to moderate pressures let us see does this equation reduce to something simple you already know what happens. Suppose we are dealing with low pressure, say less than 1 bar. What do you, what's the first thing that you expect is going to happen? First thing which is going to happen is that the vapor phase starts behaving ideally. When the vapor, vapor phase starts behaving ideally, naturally this becomes equal to 1, and this also becomes equal to 1. When we are dealing with low pressure, naturally P will be close to PI saturated. So, this becomes 0 as a result of which this whole th this whole term this becomes equal to 1. So, therefore, what happens for low for low pressure? Low pressure we find gamma i x i p i saturated you are already aware this is equals to y i p. For moderate pressures say less than 10 bar suppose what happens under this condition? Definitely under this condition this, this does not disappear, this does not disappear, but we can although we cannot assume the vapor phase to behave as ideal gas, we can always assume that the vapor mixture behaves as an ideal mixture in other words it obeys the Amagat's law of additive volumes. Accordingly what do we have under this condition? Under this condition we can have phi i v is equal to phi i v which is equal to phi i saturated this we can safely assume. So, when we can have safely assume this naturally what happens this whole term it becomes equal to 1 and again we find that for moderate pressure also P will not be very far removed from P i saturated as a result of which this term also becomes 0 and the exponential term becomes equal to 1. So, we find that for both low pressures and for low to moderate pressure this particular equation holds and when we are dealing with ideal solutions I need not repeat it once more it is very you know it very well that x i p i saturated becomes equals to y i p which is nothing but the famous 
Rawls law with which we have been dealing for quite some time right. So, therefore, now depending upon the situation it is a very complex situation or rather if you are dealing with high pressure we should be dealing with this equation. If we are dealing with low to moderate pressure we should be dealing with this equation. If we are dealing with ideal solutions we should be dealing with this, this particular equation. No matter which condition we are dealing with does not matter the problem types are as I have mentioned they can be bubble pressure dew pressure calculations, bubble temperature dew temperature calculations. Whatever be the situations we will be having I such equations or I such equations along with those those I sorry not I C equations C number of this or C number of this equations along with that we are going to have two additional constraints which also you are well aware sigma x i equals to 1 sigma y i equals to 1 or very often when we have to take up some trial and error cases then whether we have guessed or guess values are correct or not we understand by these particular checks. Now, let us take up each problem may be the first time let us let us take up isothermal data and let us see how we can find out or rather how we can calculate for uh, suppose your the first type which I have told you say T and X i are given suppose say the first type remember whatever be the type and if supposed to find that P and Y i whatever be it we, are, we will be dealing with the rather uh, we will be dealing with the same type of equations just we will be rearranging them according to the condition. For example, suppose T and X i are given what are we supposed to do if T is given we can find out P i saturated for each component i it will nothing be but equal to A i minus B i by T plus C i. So, therefore, we can find out T sorry we can find out P i saturated for each component. Once we can find out P i saturated we know X i and suppose we have some fragmentary data on Y i and P then in that case with those at least if you have data even on one particular point also P X y y y data at constant T then we will be in a position to find out gamma i. What is gamma i? It is nothing but y i p by x i p i saturated for that component i. Moment we have found out gamma i now we need to select the excess Gibbs free energy models. For this particular class although I have discussed a large number of models for this particular class we will be confining our attention either to 2 suffix Margulis equation or 3 suffix Margulis equation or Van Lahr equation. You need not memorize the equations the basic equations will be provided to you, but derivations from the equations you are supposed to do it on your own. So, therefore, once we know gamma i then, then for one particular value then from here we are in a position to find out we are going to select either the Van Lahr or the 3 suffix Margulis equation accordingly we will be in a position to find out either a 1 2 and a 2 1 or b 1 2 or b 2 1 remember one thing that these are these are referred to the constants of the 3 suffix and the Van Lahr equations of state. Once we know this we know that we have already assumed that they are independent of temperature and pressure. So, that we can use the same constants to find out gamma i for other x i values accordingly we can generate the whole set of p x y data from the fragmentary set of data. Now, let us take up a few examples just to verify or just to ratify what I have been discussing so far. This is one of the problems which I have in this problem what do we find we there is a 1 propanol and chlorobenzene temperature is given 95 degree centigrade. We are required to find out p x y data from just as I have mentioned 3 suffix Margulis and the Van Lahr equation. What are the data which are given then in this particular case? T equals to 95 degree centigrade we already know right and then we know that uh, the or uh, once we know this we it is a binary mixture we are in a position to find out the saturated pressure of propanol the saturated pressure of chlorobenzene. If you calculate this you will be finding that the saturated pressures are 681.77 torr you can check it up just 
see that the units etcetera are consistent otherwise there is no there is no place where you can make a mistake right. So, you have got you, you have got this once you have got this then for the first set of data you know x 1 you know y 1 you know p you know t. So, therefore, you are in a position to find out gamma 1 right just the way the using this particular equation here only I ok I will write it down here. One thing I would like to mention that for my case I have assumed propanol to be component 1, chlorobenzene to be component 2. Usually you find lot of problems they just specify that use this as component 1, use this as component 2. If it is not specified we already know that we usually plot all the phase diagrams with the more component phase as component 1 sorry the more volatile phase as component 1 and the less volatile phase as component 2. So, therefore, in this particular case we can since this has got a higher saturated vapor pressure we take this as component 1 we take this as component 2. So, now we can we can find out gamma 1 we know y 1 is nothing but equals to 0 0.599 p we have all we know it is 518 if if you if you just observe this you can find and we know x 1 is equals to 0 0.212 and we know the saturated vapor pressure as this right. So, if you calculate you find this is 2.1468 and accordingly your L n gamma 1 this become 0 0.764. Same way we can we can calculate it for gamma 2 just substitute the proper values you find gamma 2 is going to be 1.0609 and ln gamma 2 is going to be 0 0.0591. Now, now you have got, you have got ln gamma 1 and gamma 2 once you have got this then you can find out the excess Gibbs free energy of the mixture from experimental data what is this this is nothing but equals to sigma x i ln gamma i for a binary mixture it is x 1 l n gamma 1 plus x 2 l n gamma 2. So, so you are in a position to find because you know gamma 1 gamma 2 x 1 x 2 you can find this out. So, with this your entire experimental data is more or less ready with which you are supposed to work right. So, once you you have got this <coughs> more or less your entire till g by r t the entire thing is ready for you agreed. Now, once this part is ready now here I have we have already mentioned that uh, you are supposed to use the Van Lahr equation as well as the uh, 3 suffix Margulis equation. So, therefore, from the experimental data we have already found out gamma 1 x 1 y this part was supplied we were in a position to find out gamma 1 gamma 2 then ln gamma 1 ln gamma 2 and then till g by r t we could find out. Now, suppose initially we take up the 3 suffix Margulis equation. Now, all of us know the 3 suffix Margulis equation is given by this particular formula. So, from here what do we find out? We find out that for 3 suffix Margulis equation if we plot this particular term g by r t x 1 x 2 as a function of x 1 it should give you a linear plot. And from the linear plot from the intercept at x 1 equals to 0 what do we get a 1 2 and at x 1 equals to 1 what do we get a 2 1. So, therefore, once we have found out g by r t we know x 1 we know x 2 we are in a position to find this out. Once we are in a position to find this out so, therefore, we can always plot g e by r t x 1 x 2 as a function of x 1 this will go till 0 to 1 right. And then from from the intercepts you can find out that at x 1 equals to 0 your a 1 2 in this case is going to be 1.231 a 2 1 is going to be 1.295 this case moment you have found out a 1 a 2 now you can use again this particular equation to you know a 1 2 a 2 1 
for each particular x 1 x 2 you are now in a position to find out ln gamma 1 ln gamma 2. Once you have found out ln gamma 1 ln gamma 2 from these you can find out gamma 1 and gamma 2. Moment you have found out gamma 1 gamma 2 then using the data of x 1 and p or x 1 p 1 saturated you will be in a position to find out y 1 and p and this is precisely what we have done. If you find it out say, say let us take up the first data right for the first data we already know a 1 2 a 2 1. The first data if you observe here the first data is x 1 equals to 0.212 y 1 is given p is given right. So, so for this particular data we find ln gamma 1 using that particular equation we get it is going to be x 2 square into 1.235 plus 2 into 1.295 sorry minus 1.235 is not it into x 1 agreed because if, if you remember x 2 square is nothing but a 1 2 plus 2 into a 2 1 minus a 1 2 into x 1. So, therefore, on substitute on further simplification we find this is 1.235 plus 0.12 x 1 agreed. Same way you can substitute for ln gamma 2 you get this is going to be just like the since it is already written I would like to mention this is a 2 1 plus a 1 2 minus a 2 1 into x 2 which is nothing but x 1 square into 1.295 minus 0.12 x 2 agreed. So, for, so, therefore, from these two equations you if you know x 1 a 2 1 and a 1 2 you have already found out you can find out ln gamma 2 for different x 1's. You can also find out ln gamma 1 for different x 1's. So, for x 1 equals to 0 0.212 you can find out ln gamma 1 would have been equal to you can just substitute then uh, instead of x 1 you can put 0 0.212 and then finally, you find out gamma 1 as 2.1873, gamma 2 as 1.0554. What is p equals to? p will be equal to 522.79 dot. And what will y be equal to? y 1 will be equal to? It is gamma 1 x 1 p 1 saturated by p substitute all the values gamma 1 is equals to 2.1873. Let me substitute 2.1873. What is x 1? 0.212. What is p 1 saturated? That also we have already calculated it is 681.77. What is the total pressure? It is already written down there. It is 522.79. So, what is y 1 that you get? 0.6047 agreed. So, therefore, for the first case you are in a position to find out your x you, you are in a position to find out all the values you are in a position I have done it here and and it is provided here. So, therefore, your gamma 1 gamma 2 y 1 p everything has been there using 3 suffix margulis equation instead of 0 0.212 you can repeat the calculations with 0 0.43. Same way you are going to proceed you are, you are going to find out you know a 1 2 a 2 1. So, you are in a position to find out ln gamma 1 ln gamma 2 from ln gamma 1 gamma 2 you can find out gamma 1 and gamma 2. Once you know this you can find out p you can find out y 1. So, if you repeat these calculations this is the final p x y data that you, you will be in a position to generate using 3 suffix margulis equation. Now, suppose I tell you to repeat the same with Van Laar equation. The procedure is completely same just the equations are different. For Van Laar equation if you remember this is the equation which, which we have right. So, in this equation if you are going to plot this particular term with x 1 again in this case we are going to get a straight line here ok. And so, so if we are plotting here what do we get suppose we are plotting x 1 x 2 by g e by r t 
as a function of x 1 ranging from 0 to 1. In this case also we will be getting a, a straight line, where this part the at x 1 equals to 0 you get 1 by b 1 2 from here you can see and here you get 1 by b 2 1 right. From which from these reciprocal values you are in a position to find out the actual the actual b 1 2 b 2 1. So, in this particular case if you are repeating it you are going to see that your for your case b 1 2 will be equal to 1.2346 b 2 1 will be equal to 1.2970. Now, once you once you know this then you are in again a position to find out gamma 1 for the for the different cases l n gamma 1 values are given l n gamma 2 values are given. So, once these two are given you know b 1 2 you know x 1 you know x 2 you can find out these. Once you can find out gamma 1 and gamma 2 you will be in a position to find out sorry from the l n values you are in a position to find out gamma 1 and gamma 2. Moment you know gamma 1 and gamma 2 then you can <coughs> use it to find out y 1 and p. Say for example, suppose we start with x 1 is the same x 1 value the first value 0 0.212 right. From here if you if you do you find out gamma 1 is going to be using the van Laar equation it is going to be 2.1869 gamma 2 is going to be 1.0554. From here you can find out p what is p going to be it is 2.1869 into 0 0.212 into 681.77 plus your 1.0554 into 1 minus 0 0.212 which is 0 0.788 248.48 which gives you the P as 522.74 what is y 1 equals to then y 1 if you calculate you find out that this is going to be 0 0.6047. So, therefore, just the way I have I have I have done the calculations for the first case 0 0.212 this is the situation I have found out gamma 1, gamma 2, p tor and y 1 right. So, therefore, I can repeat it for the other x 1s and generate the p x y data using the van Laar equation. So, therefore, in this particular way what have we done? We have generated the p x y data for <coughs> using the two suffix sorry three suffix Margulis equation. We have generated the data from the Van Laar equation and now if you compare these particular data with the original data you can understand for yourself which one is much more accurate. Well, this was when we were dealing with isothermal VLE data. Now, it is in chemical process industries we find that distillation operations are usually carried out under isobaric conditions. So, it is often much more convenient to deal with isobaric data than with isothermal data. We will be dealing with this in the next class. We will be taking up a specific problem and see how we are just going to rearrange the equations which we have, which we have uh, rather discussed in this class in order to obtain isobaric VLE data. Thank you very much.